Okay, could you see the screenshot? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so let me type start. Okay, we can start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so hello. So today I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to the chapter five is the is the keep we try to keep looking at the the basic functions of the pandas package in Python. So yeah, today we're gonna we're gonna start with the uh start with the index object because uh, we stopped here last week. So I'm gonna continue to do that. So it's a uh, so it's about the database and then uh, all as you can see all the series and then uh, uh Python data frame has an index and row name and column, right? So index with the row name or and then column names, right? So in here we can also we already saw the there is a each row has a, their own uh own index, usually integer. Usually, number as a default, but we can also customize in that uh, that index index name, right? So as you can see here at the bottom, like a PD series, and then uh, we can try to create the some of the series, and then this object index, this object gonna be like uh, <clears throat> how we can do this? It's a it's a zero, one and two right and then and then each has uh each actually has the index name as a, a and b and c right because uh, we actually define the object index gonna be the index like here and then we have uh, these indexes we can draw yeah. and then whenever we have an index subset we can actually have a subset for the index but the thing is, index object is immutable. That means we cannot, uh, once once it is uh, determined, it cannot yeah, that's why it, that's, uh, change. Some, some little bit of yeah. background noise. I I hear you, but there's some background noise. You know. You have a background noise right now. Yeah, I I do hear. I just speak like that. It's like something is bitting along when you're speaking. So I don't know whether it's from my end or okay. your end. I don't know. But I I do hear you. I hear you clearly. I get you but so now like, now how about how about this now can right? you is it is yeah. it good yeah i think it's fine okay do you hear do you did you hear any background noise now yeah the, the, it's, it's still there but i, I hear you so we can continue but it's still ah uh, okay hold on i hear you maybe it's from my end maybe uh, let me cut uh, every time I use some specific uh headset. You always said there is some some noise happening. So hold on. Okay. Let's see. Uh, how about now? Can you hear me? Yeah, no, now it's fine. No, no, no. Now, now it's it's much better, right? Yeah, there is no noise. It's it's excellent. Okay, I will. I will continue then. Okay. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So. So in here, actually, like I said, index object is immutable. So this is the very important because, in here, as as you can see at the top, you will see the index object is the highly immutable kind of object. That means once you once you have a, cause in in this case we have a one, two, three, as a series, right? And then we already de defined the each, uh, each index as an A and B and C, right? Once we you determine, it it is in, it is impossible to do that. Maybe you can try to do this one, like uh, index one gonna be D. It types error, okay? Maybe it is much safer if you can do that is like uh, in here, you can actually have a label like this. In this one, in this case, we have a label one and zero and one and two, right? Index, as an index. 
And then when we create the, this series in here, it's a rep uh, using the dead label here. And then you, we will have uh, this index name, right? Right, so yeah. that's the how it looks like, and then yeah, but so we can like sort of change the 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 order of the index index in right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right, and also also in here as you can see here maybe you can also think about the okay these are the column name right Ohio and Nevada and then the year gonna be the our index right. And then yeah. when we say about the column, we have a we have an index as an Ohio and Nevada as an index, and then a name is name actually come from the state, which is the we already defined before, and then this in function is a kind of a, a kind of a boolean function about the when you when we have a column index, do we have an Ohio one, which is we already have this one as an Ohio right. So that yeah. means actually true. And then uh, in 2003 as an index is actually false because there is no 2003 in here, right? So that's yeah. it gives us false. Yeah. And then also what is interesting about this one is the pandas index can be contained a duplicate, duplicate label, which means this, like this, right? Well, that's in this interesting. Yeah, it, it, it just kind of, uh, we have a full, two fulls and then two bars, right? Like this, this is as an index. I don't know what about the columns, but the thing is anyway, we can actually define the, this one. What this one is about is that this one actually allows us to, to use this kind of index name as a kind of a more like a duplicate row with the same same index name, like uh, when we try to do, especially when we try to do the more like a time series data. Uh, uh, using the using the index name. Okay, this one is actually I think the a little bit different from R because. Uh, Usually R, R actually have automatically indexing the, in case of the data frame, automatically indexing the data, uh, data index name as an integer, like one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And then we use it, this one as, an, as it is. I personally think that there is also a function that we can allow us to the changing this one, but, but normally we do not using this one as a changes. And then maybe we can actually create the year year variable. I think that it is also the work the same way when we try to do the to the Python maybe in the time series data set instead of the changing the this index name like the this kind of a dupl duplicate label maybe mm -hmm. in the time series data maybe we can we can leave it leave it like an index row name as it is maybe we can actually maybe create the time variable like a 2000, 2000, 2000, maybe 2001, 2002, et cetera, like this. Yeah. And then yeah. this column gonna be using, also can be possible to do this way. Maybe, maybe if you can familiar with the more like a data structure from R, maybe this might be the more convenient way we can use for this one rather than try to make a duplicate for the label. But anyway, in the index, this one is what this does is the index name can be possible to do the duplicate indexes. So like I said, so index has a lot of property and then a lot of different commands. So like a append, because adding the, adding the index object, like additional index objects, and then a differences or intersection, union is the, about the combined one. And then a delete, drop, and insert, or unique. Unique is the more like a unique value in the index, right? Yeah, yeah. So these are the kind of functions we can use. And then now we can move to the 5.2, uh, 5 like a more like a 
in-depth understanding of auto functionality. So first thing is the, what is called the re-indexing. So re-indexing is a kind of a try to reassign, I would say about the create the new object with the value, rearrange with the new indexes, right? So it is not the kind of a changing the original one. It is actually about the reassign, uh, create the new object. Instead of the re changing, cause uh, like I said, the index is uh, immutable. So then instead of the doing that, we can just create a new object with the newly assigned the new indexes. So in here, we can say about the, this one, this series is gonna be created. So as you can see here, this one is the series variable. And then whenever we create the C in here, whenever we try to try to create a new object, and then when you try to new object, we can actually re-indexing can be possible like this by based on the these objects. Okay? Original yeah, yeah. objects. And then that's the reason why we have uh, this NAM value in here. Because in the OBG2, we don't have any E value compared to the, this object. Because this re-indexing actually come from the OBG, the original one. But the original yeah. one does not have any assigned value. So that's the reason why we have an AM value in here. Okay. Mm. And then same thing. So in here, this one is actually more like a, what is called a forward field kind of value. So this one is actually kind of a very interesting one because when uh, assuming that we have uh, created this kind of a uh, series, so that means we have uh, this series, right? And then uh, when we creating to the re-indexing the this one to updating one like a uh, refill, that means like a uh, zero has a uh, original one has a uh, zero has a uh, blue, and then after that we actually keep that blue, uh, that blue value before the purple. And then same thing gonna be happen like this. Based on the previous previous column, the other missing value gonna be filled based on the, that yeah. previous values, okay? That's the, what is called the forward field kind of value. And then also we can also same thing gonna be applied for the indexing gonna be applied for the data frame. Like uh, when we have uh, this arrangement and then uh, we have uh, this ACD as an index and then uh, Ohio, Texas and California gonna be the, our column, right? Here, up here. And then when we try to do the re-indexing the this one, like uh, adding the board B, adding the B as a low, second low index, that means we have uh, an AM value with the low B gonna be the empty. Right, that's the how we can updating our indexes. Yeah. So the, the default index is always from zero, one going to to n, right? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. So that's the kind of things. Yeah. And then these are the what is called the index the indexing kind of value. Okay. And then also we can try to do the same thing. Like uh, in this case, at and here we have uh, Ohio, Texas, and California, but maybe we can re-indexing to the Utah one to be newly added. Because the original one does not have a uh, Utah as a value. So we have a uh, O and A and value for this. Right? <laughs> Yeah, it's a quite, quite, quite act like a quite different name compared to the R, but it still has a, this kind of thing. And then this one is a, how we can try to add in the new column by updating the existing database, a data frame, right? So, and also we can try to do the frame in the index based on the state, based on the column path. So that means we actually have a two way to do this, like a, like here, assign to the state first, and then uh, we can try to re-indexing function, try to do the column, designate the column, or maybe we can just re-indexing and then, and then calling the that 
uh, that variable, and then we can try to define the where where this one gonna be applied for the new indexing, okay? Like uh, columns or index or axis, these are the kind of a very important one. And also field the value, like a missing one, this one, and then also label gonna be also important one to we usually using, okay? Yeah, a lot of functions. Yeah. Yeah. It it is yeah. quite similar to when we deal with the data frame in R and data frame in Python, it looks like a pretty similar, but the a little bit little, little bit subtle difference about the how the way it the way those kind of uh manipulating data set gonna be expressed in the command is a slightly different. Because uh, usually R is the more like a vector oriented kind of a languages. So like uh, like uh, in Python is the more like a object oriented programming. So that's the reason why we actually have uh, this kind of a dot attribute calling function. That actually reason why we have to be a little bit unfamiliar or sometimes a little bit confusing mm -hmm. about the dealing with the data in Python compared to the dealing with the data in R, okay? So those are the thing. And then also you also we can using about the ROC uh, operator, which is the location operator. We already covered this one before. So in case of the frame data frame, location gonna be the this one is the row, right? A and D and C. And then this one is the column. By calling the designate row and column, we can actually what is called the subsetting. Subsetting data frame, okay. Right? This one is uh, yeah. compared to the original one. We can actually try to subsetting the data set based on the this double bracket. And then uh, each, each bracket and then uh, each break inside the bracket, there is another bracket to to tell tell the Python about the what kind of a law. Uh, what rows we gonna we gonna extract, and then what column we gonna extract based on the ROC function, okay? And also we can use using the I ROC function, which is the I ROC is actually try to do this based on the uh, calling uh, uh, calling the number, not the not the calling the name by itself, okay? So maybe in this case. Maybe I will say about the how we can try to do is uh, like a frame I L C double bracket and then this one is uh, zero uh maybe uh three two I think and then California and Texas gonna be maybe one and three I guess maybe maybe uh two uh Maybe zero uh one and two yeah, here like this. Like from the from the main from the yeah the main data you mean? Because like uh when we looking at the frame data, I think that we already have in the previous page. Page previous pages we have a, a B C D okay as a column index, and then uh, we have uh, Ohio, California, and Texas, right? And yeah. then how oh, this one is like a uh, ADC is this one is a zero, right? Actually oh. zero. And then uh, this one is a three, right? Yeah. And this yeah. zero, one, two, three, right? Yeah. And this one is also zero, one, two, right? So I ROC actually using the number as a, as an indexing. So ADC means zero three, two, right? And then mm. California and Texas is gonna be the one, two. Okay, that's the how this one is about. Cause I ROC always using the integer to, to, call, to call, the, call the data frame, okay? In yeah. case of the ROC, ROC can use the, this column name by itself. Right? 
Yeah. Which is the a little bit more straightforward, but more like a longer, longer typing. Yeah, you have to type right? more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, last week we seen this. Uh, yeah, yeah. LOC and IOC last week. Yeah, you just yeah you just uh, try to using this one actually interchangeably, depending on the your data set. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you have to need to the calling the more than 10 different column or 11 different rows. That's you cannot call every name like this. In that case, this indexing gonna be more convenient, right? IROC function. If you need to kind of calling the more bigger set of the data frame, okay? So yeah. that's the reason why you can interchangeably using the ROC and IROC, okay? And then uh, dropping the entry to the axis is uh, kind of like a, supposing, supposing that we have uh, this kind of a series, right? Like this. And then when you try to drop the C, we, you can just uh, call, the, call the drop and then you can delete the C element. Mm -hmm. And also try to multiple dropping. You can try to do that one as a multiple drop like this. It is also the same for the data frame. Okay. We have a index name for the Y Colorado, Utah, New York as a as an index name in here. And then uh, we have a one, two, three, four as a column name, right? And then when we try to drop the indexes by using the indexes, Ohio and Colorado, like to oh, these two, you can actually drop and then designate the uh define the where which one you wanna the you wanna to delete the index, and then these two gonna be deleted. And also you can try to do the drop to the columns at two. That means you can drop this one too, right? From the original data set. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. Yeah. I think the drop is uh, function is quite straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is also same thing. Like uh, you can also call the axis one. Actually, axis one actually represent about the column. Yeah. Okay, and then you can designate the two as a column name. And then you can also do the do the this one instead. These two are actually the same, like access to the column. And then a drop drop column gonna be uh, defined first, right? It's a straightforward. And then next one is the indexing and selection, selection and the filtering. So this one is a more like a conditional kind of a subsetting and then a data selections, okay? It is a it is more like a subset subsetting subsetting data frame or maybe series in Python, right? Okay. So assuming that we have uh, this kind of series data right here, right? And then uh, when we try to uh, try to call the obg that b we have a 1.0 as a value right or you can actually also using the one as an index which is the 1.0 like a b right mm -hmm. and also you can try to do the two and four that means the two and three right so d and d c and d gonna become the and then you can also do the bracket as a list and then try to call Calling the death subsetting here, right? Also, same thing for the using the indexing number. And also, you can do that. What you can do that is this one, like an object number. This OBG is the less than two, means this OBG has the two, has the index number is less than two. That means a zero and one, right? And then you can call these two, like a zero and one, list of index, right? Yeah. That's the how you can do this. And then also like a ROC function can be used, like a just kind of a straightforwardly detonating this one. 
rather than the use one, this one. This one is actually not recommended. Even if it works the same way, but this one is uh, more like a not, uh, I would say not straightforward. Okay, because this one is a little bit kind of uh, confusing about the about the how what kind of things we gonna actually calling about. We already know about the, this one is about the calling by the by the uh, index name in order, but this one is the more more clear, a more straightforward way. Hmm. Okay, or maybe you can using this one as a as a kind of a maybe I ROC function can be possible. So, so in here, in here, this one is a very important one because uh, the reason why we put it to ROC is because different treatment of the integer when indexing with uh, this bracket based indexing. Because uh, in here actually we uh we actually calling the this one and three as an index name but the thing is that uh, this index name is uh, not actually number this one is actually more like a tweet like a, uh like a character or maybe more like a factor kind of a variable so it is a little bit confusing about the even if you we already know what the, this way can be works, but the thing is rather than the using that one, we can try to make it more clear about the, exactly what we wanted to clearly uh try to extract, like here. So this one is indexes. When if for example we have uh, this kind of a uh series gonna be created. And then object two gonna be the this one, okay. And then obg one has uh, this index name, right? In here, it looks like uh, this one is the uh, actually index first index, second index, and third index, right? But the yeah, thing yeah. is that uh, this one, this one is actually very confusing because uh, this one is actually not the exact, exact, uh, exact. Uh, assignment indexing name because this index name actually two, but the thing is that this one is the very first index. So to call the, this one, we actually try to using the obj one calling, uh, like a, uh, like a zero, right? Yeah, zero. That might be the possible. Even if it is two, it is not the it, this one is actually okay. Not not OBJ is two is not possible in this case. Right? Because this one is actually just kind of a name itself. But the original order, index order is the zero, right? So we using the this one as an order to call the this column, not using the like this. So it is. Uh, that's the reason why it is very confusing sometimes to calling no, the just, calling the yeah. So I, I think it's better just to leave the default indexing. That that way you don't have yeah. much problem. But I think he's just showing us this to demonstrate the possibilities. Yeah, yeah. possibility. But sometimes it might be happen, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So. So that's the reason why he says about the, this one gonna be very confusing and then uh, it is advisable to using the this LOC. But the thing is when you're using the LOC function, this one does not work. Cause an uh, LOC always, always try to uh, try to calling the name by name, right? Not the indexing order, right? This one is actually indexing order. So, if you wanted to using that one as a kind of things, we have to using the I L C in here, right? Yeah. First, this one is a zero, order zero, order one, order two, right? Zero, one, two, so two, zero, one. Yeah, it's a very confusing because this one is a, just kind of a very extreme example about the manipulating the database. But the thing is, like you said, usually, normally, 
we do not actually create our own indexes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You use we usually assign the automatically assign the number as an index. So there might be the low probability, low possibility to using this kind of way. Yeah. Or if unless unless we we are uh, intentionally changing change those kind of uh, uh index name, right? So that's the thing, right? Okay, just kind of looking at the, about the, how you can use the IROC and then IROC function, right? IROC is a kind of an integer, uh, abbreviation of the integer location. And then the ROC is a just kind of an index location. This one is actually location. Identify identify by integer. This one is the location, identifying location by name. Yeah. Okay. That's right. the main differences. And then I just make sure I ROC and ROC can be used interchangeably depending on the your data structure and then a data look like. Okay. And yeah. then right like here, like a VNC like a ROC, identifying the location by index name, right? Mm -hmm. And and here you can try to do the index name. Uh, by using the index name, you can actually updating the value like this, right? Because the value yeah. itself is the not immutable. This one, value in the data frame, value is the not, immu not immutable, which is the, nat which is the natural, right? Because every time we need to manipulate the data set, value should be updated, right? Yeah. But index is immutable. Yeah. Once you assign the value to the some specific index, index cannot be changed. Maybe you can re-indexing it, but basically, yeah, yeah, you can you can, uh, ba basically the index by itself is the immutable. So in here, supposing that the, we have a, this kind of a data set, and then data two as a column, gonna be have a, this kind of value. And then also we can also changing the order to calling the this column, like a three gonna be first, one gonna be second, right? And also indexing can be do this one like this, when you try to call in this one is, this one is actually based on the calling the data by the law first. So zero and one, cause this one is a zero and one. So that means here, this data gonna be subsetting, right? Right? And also you can see here is the data three is the five. That means when we looking at the data, uh, when we looking at the column three, and then a uh, column three ha has the value more than five, we only extract the that day that day that row and column data as a data frame, right? Like a subset. Mm -hmm. And then another thing, another use case is that you, we can also use in the, this one as a scalar comparison, what is called, this one is a scalar comparison, which means when we try to look at the data in here, less than five means just try to see, just try to true, give us to the true or false when the value, we, all the value, check the all the value within the data frame is the is the less than five. That is the this one is a zero, one, two, three, four. So these are the all, all true, and then other than that is the false, right? And then you can yeah. update in this kind of way to it go zero. That means all of the these five values are gonna be the zero. Right? The entire when we look at the entire value as a scholar, which means just kind of a listing of the variable and then a 
we just only look at those variable across the all the column and all the row in within the data frame. And then whenever it meets the standards, value gonna be updated. Yeah, this 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 could be very quite handy if you are manipulating data. Mm. It'd be very useful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And also you can select the data frame with the uh, ROC and IROC. We are, I already covered slightly covered this one before. Like yeah. uh, data when we pre have uh, this data, and then ROC has the Colorado as a row here. And then we can have uh, this one as a series. Right? Single row is the series with the index. Right? Yeah. And also, ROC is the Colorado and New York, which means we have a double multiple way. This one is a data frame. And then also we can try to do the IROC like using the some of the integer here, mm -hmm. right? ROC is the two means, what it means is the zero, one, two, three. So this one, the Utah one gonna be extracted. It's A9, 11, A9, 10, 11. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Also the same thing here in 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 is a two and one, which means we have a two as a Utah one and one is the Colorado one. Because mm -hmm. when you see here, two is the Utah, right? And one yeah, is the yeah, Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Based on the that that low order, mm -hmm. it actually using that order and, and then try to listing the those data. And then IROC means in here and then the 301 means means this one. Okay, so in here, two is the Utah one, right? As a yeah. whole. And then a 301 is the one, zero, one, two, three. Three is the four, one, two. That's the four one two, right? Yeah. This one is the color model, right? And then this one is the low order, right? That's like a coordinate system, like a coordinate, like a matrix. Yeah, yeah. Try to, to extract the elements, right? Yeah, this one yeah. is how you can also working about what is called the slicing, the database, using the this name or these kind of functions, right? These are actually two conditions. Cause the first one is that we actually slicing the data first. And then after that, based on the death slices, we can also put the another conditions for the value. Okay. This one is a more like a slicing. And then, Try to value, try to condition, condition for the for the extracting value within the within the slice data frame. So condition the results like we got after slicing, sort of. Yeah, after slicing. So slicing first, and then based on the dead slices, we have to meet the conditions. Which only extract the final slide, final database based on the meet the this condition. Okay. So, but this slice is it's like it's uh, it's uh, looking at the. Okay, so here is the. Just looking okay, at let's the, see. The, 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 okay, okay, let's uh, three. let's see how how it works. Okay. Yeah, it's looking uh, at three. We'll see you in. So. Ohio, Colorado, Utah, and New York, and then a one, a one, two, three, four. This one is the original data, right? Yeah, that's the original data. Okay. So what this, what this one means? Okay. This one is actually everything, like a row, right? Yeah, all the rows. Yeah. 
So all, all row gonna be selected. Mm. And then this one is actually what is called the uh, zero, one, two, right? In this one. Mm. So zero, yeah. one, two, three. So that means only these three gonna be selected. Yeah. This part gonna be selected, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Yeah. This one is the data I L O C and colon comma colon three, right? Yeah, this the slice data. And then and then let's see about the this one is uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, okay? Mm -hmm. So second one is the, okay, when we looking at the this slice of the data set, we just extract the da data, slice the data, which means when we looking at the data three, the column three, which one is the, this one, is the more, uh, the value is the more than five, right? That means this one is actually two, right? So which one is false, right? So that row gonna be taken out, removed. Whole row gonna be removed. Six is the true, so we keep it. 10 is the true, we keep it. 14 is the true, so we keep it. So that's the reason why we have a final, these three by three data at the bottom here. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Hmm. But the reason why we have a zero in here is the at the top in the previously we actually updating the this value in here, right? Yeah, you did that. So this yeah. one is a, yeah, this one is a zero actually. So yeah. this one is actually zero actually. So all zero, I guess, here. So this one gonna be deleted and then this three gonna be extracted based on the this all of the these value meet the condition of the data three has the data value in the column three has the more than five, right? That's the that's the result in here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. So here is the data three is the two more than two more than and equals to two. You can also yeah, have the this three D. Uh this is gonna be the same one. Okay. So these are the many way you can select. So what we can do is to just try to keep looking at the, these attributes very carefully, and then uh and then uh try to try to get familiar with the, these kind of a uh, work uh, mechanism, okay? Like we did for like like we did in R, okay? Cause uh. The only, the, the only thing we can do is that we just keep practicing and then get more experience about the dealing with this database in the Python, right? Like we did for the R, okay? That's the how it had to do because we keep looking at this a lot of these kind of variations, but the only thing we have to do is that we just try to keep looking at this one and get familiar with the data cleaning, okay? Yeah, and then yeah. the intent indexing fit ball is a kind of a kind of a error messages that we have to meet when we try to deal with the, this database, like uh this one, like a PD series, and then we have a uh, we have a uh, this assuming that we have a uh, this value, and then uh, this negative one does not actually work that way. Okay, in in case of the pandas, this one is gonna be the error messages. Instead mm -hmm. of the doing that, maybe if we have uh, this kind of indexing number like this, and then uh, we can try to do the this way, you can actually get the value for the two here. Because in this case, we have uh, A, B, C, and then the value gonna be point, 0, 0, 0.0, 1.0, 0, 2.0, right? And then in here, we actually have a order, indexing order for the zero, one, and two, and then this one is a negative one, negative two, negative oh. three, 
in yeah. the in the reverse order, right? Yeah. So when we try to do the negative one, means DC value, and then we can get the DC value once we have a this customizable kind of indexing, not the kind of a, this integer, okay? So some some little bit of uh, differences between Py pandas mm. and and yeah. actual Python. Because negative yeah, one right. actually should work in, in Python object. Yeah. 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 Or maybe you can try to do the this way, like a I arrow C, because this one is actually more like a integer indexing, right? Yeah, yeah. So in that case, you can actually I arrow C function, you can actually call in the this reverse order as an indexing. Okay. Not the not the SER directly directly using this one. Because this one is actually kind of a calling the low uh low order index. So this one is actually very confusing one. So so you just kind of keep in mind about the just using the I ROC or ROC function rather than the try to using the this kind of a bracket based kind of approaches. Okay. Just think about the this ROC and then I ROC and then using this one. Try to get familiar with this kind of a command to extract the data uh, in our our data set. Okay. Because this one is a more like a, in here like a break it uh break it based approaches versus maybe ROC and I ROC approaches. Because uh, so far we actually try to looking at the, these two different way to uh, the subsetting and then the manipulating data set. But in here, in the in this book, actually this one is the more like a recommended, like a ROC, and then and then I ROC approaches. I also think that this one is the more like a straightforward. Yeah, it's compared it's, to the it's this one. one. It's even yeah. easier. I think it's even easier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and also the same thing for the what is called the chain indexing, which one is the, this kind of a, using the this kind of a subsetting kind of thing or some of the condition one, maybe using the ROC or I ROC function gonna be the more convenient way you can try to updating or subsetting or filtering the data set, okay? So just kind of a one thing you have to, we have to remember is a just try to think about the using ROC and IROC function. Okay. In the in the pan in the pandas when we try to deal with uh, this kind of data set, this one is a more convenient way we can try to manipulate in our data set rather than the bracket based. Maybe sometimes we can use in the bracket based, but both part is the uh, takes time to get familiar with it. So, but anyway, and then also arithmetic and then data alignment is the when we have a multiple data data set like a S1 and S2, like a more, more than two series. And then what you can do is the, maybe we can try to do this, this one is the, this kind of outcome. Why is that? Cause in here, S1, is index a uh a c d e and then 7.3 minus 2.5 3.4 1.5 and then uh this one is actually s1 and then s2 is a c e f g and then negative 2.1 3.6 then negative 1.5 Four and three point one. What this one does is, what S one plus S two does is, the only calculation gonna be happen when when the when the S one and S two has the same index, like a like a, a low name is A gonna be calculated, and then low with the name is the C gonna be calculated, and same for the E. In case of the D and F and G. There is a no, uh, no column 
shared column, both C and F and G does not have uh, both tables. So that's the reason why we have uh, this kind of NAM value. Even if we can try to do the uh, uh, plus sign, this one can be NAM value because of the, we cannot calculate in the outcome. Okay. It's the same thing for the data frame. Even if we have a data frame like this, and then when we try to do the DF1 and DF2, you're just thinking about the like a like a Colorado, Ohio one gonna be Ohio one, Texas gonna be the Texas one. Oregon does not have a DF1 does not have a Oregon, so it's the NAN. And then Utah does not have for the DF1, so it's also NAN. And also Oregon and Colorado, right? Colorado does not have a doesn't have in the DV2. So that's the things that's this kind of table going to be extracted, even if we can try to plus kind of arithmetic calculation. Okay. And also the same thing in here. This one is a kind of a more like a combined A and B, but the thing is all is the NAN because they are not actually have a same same column name or a same not do not have a, this kind of a same column name. So it has a combined, but the arithmetic calculation cannot be possible. Because uh, yeah. yeah, column A does column A does uh, does not exist in the second one. Column B does not exist in uh, does not exist in the first one. No. So all any and value value gonna be comes out. Right? And then also we can think about the, this kind of database. And then when we try to combine these things, as you can see, this is all NAM value. And then maybe you can say about the, whenever we have a field value based on the add, based on the DF2, and then we can have a, have a field value based on the DF2 to updating the DF1. Right, because uh, DF two has the uh has the E right, so we have to fill the value for uh, based on the DF two, when D this one is actually DF one, right? Using the data frame two to fill the value for the DF one to add. Yeah. Right here, yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. It's, it's and then, yeah, yeah, it's the kind of a crazy kind of things. Yeah, I think. And then also, this was, operations yeah. are, I mean, I, I think the arithmetic operations, most of them are quite flare. Yeah. And also, same thing for the another arithmetic, like a DB, you know, divide, and then this kind of a RDIV divergent kind of thing. We also try to do that the same thing, right? Yeah. And also the re indexing gonna be the same, like uh, based on the column and then re indexing, and then the field value for the zero is that this one gonna be field up to zero, and this one is a field up to zero based on the DF two column. Okay. Yeah, it's a quite quite <laughs> sometimes confusing, but we have to think about the how just slowly think about how this one works. Is uh, it is quite logical. And then a very straightforward try to do the why this can be possible or something. Okay. And then data frame also has that kind of a divisions, subtraction, right? And multiplication and exponential, like a power kind of things. And also operation between the data frame and series is also can be defined. Like uh, once we have uh, this kind of a numpy kind of array here and then we can also have uh, this array value gonna be calculating the one by one also the same thing for the database like uh, here data frame and then a series and then we can try to calculate the this frame a uh, data uh, uh, try to Subtract, try to yeah. calculation from the frame by using the frame and series okay to match the index of the series 
All right. Yeah. Do you, do you understand what this one means, right? Because they actually looking at the this this column name from the series based on yeah. the series index name, mm -hmm. and then once it is once it is match, calculation gonna be happen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once it does not does not match, calculation does not happen, and then keep the original value from the frame. Mm -hmm. Not the yeah. not the producing the NAN. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, and then also series from the series from the frame. In this case, the plus sign is more like updating, and then a more like a concatenate kind of value. So it is kind of updating things. So that's the reason why we have an AM value like this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So same thing also has the has the happen for the this series. And then frame. And then uh, when we try to do the frame sub, and then the uh, X is gonna be the index. So all, every time it has the match for the this index name, it gonna be have a calculation. So B is the zero, and then Utah has the uh one point zero in the series. So so sub subset uh sub means it's the it's the subtract, right? So that means zero minus one is the negative one. And then Ohio one. This one is actually Ohio one is a 4.0 in series, and then uh, in the data frame is a 3.0. That means three negative four gonna be negative one, like that way. So whenever you find the matches, calculate can happen and updating it as a frame. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's the thing you have to keep in mind. Oh, okay. Any it's question? It's quite long, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a very quite long. It is already one hour has passed. Yeah, but I think the, oh, the, the, yeah. the core has we've discussed the core topic, you know. But but the thing is the actually in this book, mm. how you can get familiar with the pandas is the most critical things you have to familiar with, and then you have to learn in the Python data analytics. That's the reason why this chapter has the, such a long chapter. And also mm -hmm. same for the chapter six. Chapter six gonna be, we gonna actually in here, what we can, what we did is the, in here, we actually generating the very hypothetical kind of a data frame, right? We actually create our data frame in, in Python and then are using it. But in the chapter six, we actually, chapter six actually learn about the, how we can import, right? And then yeah, the export, and stuff like that, yeah. export yeah. actual file. And then how mm. you how you can manipulate the, that data set obtained from yeah. the actual find, file, mm. right? This one is more complicated, chapter six. But it's the pretty same way, similar, when we try to using the importing and exporting data in R, it's the pretty yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. But still have a, we have a something, some subtle differences in dealing with this kind of a data frame obtained from the file when we try to do that in Python. So that one gonna be covered chapter six and then a chapter six was a very long chapter. But the thing is a bit, without you without understanding that this kind of a basic function very clearly, chapter six is the very, very confused, may, might be the more confusing than this. So that's the reason why I'm gonna try to keep slow, a little bit slowly to, to get familiar with these kind of things for myself and you, okay? So- uh, Yeah, no, I, I see your point. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's stop here for today, okay? Yeah. And then let me type here.